If you're working with lots of data, you may have seen this file format called Avro. AVRO Avro. Today's video, I will talk about it and share my thoughts on when and why we want to use this file format. Hey everyone, I am Riz. Welcome to my channel where I will talk about anything to do with engineering data and cloud. Before I save my content, as always, I put all the timestamps down below so you can skip through to the part you like to see. Before I start explaining what Afro is, you might wonder why we would consider using other file formats like Avro than just CSV or Excel. There are a couple of reasons. Uh, one is cost. So processing data and storing data cost money. And Storing data, especially when it comes to lots and lots of data, uh, will obviously cost you more. And as the data grows, uh, the storage costs increase, then the processing uh, costs, processing meaning the CPU, the IO, and the networking costs, especially maybe if you use cloud, will also increase as you have more data. And secondly, is speed. And generally takes a bit longer to query and select data if you are handling lots and lots of data i'm talking about millions or hundreds of millions of data in the format of csv or excel and that's why these other file formats like avro or Pake comes in handy and lastly maybe there are other kind of features that uh, might be useful uh, like schema evolution uh, that avro comes with that could be useful and good as a reason why we want to use this kind of file format. What is Afro? Well, Afro is actually not a file format, but it's a framework for serializing data. Now to explain about it, let's head to the slide. In order to explain what data serialization is, serialization is basically converting file into a binary format that's more machine readable. Let's say we have data and we need a serializer to convert that into another file format, into database, or written into memory. And because it's serialized, you can deserialize that and then back into its original data format. Now, Avro is basically a framework to do that. So Avro itself, it's not a file format like CSV. Now to show you what Afro looks like under the hood, as always, Afro is a collection of header and blocks. And in the header, it contains a title, which is a for ASCII character, the file metadata. This is the schema of the file and is written in JSON format. And lastly, it also suggests the compression codec is going to be used if the file is compressed. Now the compression codec can be snappy, can be LSO and gzip things like that. Lastly, it also has a sync maker which helps to split the files to, uh, to be used for MapReduce processing. Now, I mentioned MapReduce here because Avro is been, has been around for ages actually, for over a while. So that's why it's, uh, it's been used heavily in the big data uh, MapReduce days. Now with the blocks, each block has a number of things. One is the number of objects within that block and the size of that block itself in byte. Now bear in mind that this is the size of the serialized objects. And when, when the file is written into uh, Afro-like format, and the file and the data within it are serialized, like I mentioned earlier. And obviously the data itself in serialized format and it could be compressed or not compressed. And a sync maker again. Again, the sync maker here is to help facilitate sp file splitting, file splitting between each uh, block. So if you notice that uh, at the end of the header, there's a sync maker here. At the end of each block, there's a sync maker. It's 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 to help to uh, understand uh, file splitting between header block one, block two, and so on and so forth. Now that is that's exactly exactly what Afro file under the hood. To show you whether Afro is a decent or good file format to choose from, I've done a demo comparison between these two file formats. Before I go on with my comparison results, I want to highlight some caveats. First of all, I'm testing this using the same data source in a Parquet file, 
uh, with 10 million rows. Both are processed in Databricks community optimized cluster. It's just one cluster, small cluster, two cores with 15 gig RAM. I'm using Spark 3.1.2 and the read time on the comparison which I will show in a bit is purely based on a query to just summarize salaries by gender. It's a very simple summary of the data. Now just to show you what the comparison looks like, here it is. So I have CSV and Afro in comparison with comparing write time, file size and read time. Now as you can see here from the top write time, CSV takes 1 minute 31 seconds to write the 10 million rows. Afros, on the other hand, is just shy quicker, about 6 seconds there, 1 minute 25 seconds. For while file size, it's a huge difference here. So CSV is, uh, is giving 747 meg as a file size, whereas Afro is 476 megabytes here, which is a lot less than CSVs. This is good for storage point of view. Read time, CSV, uh, again to summarize the salaries by gender, female and male. It took 1 minute and 43 seconds in Databricks Community Edition, whereas Afro only took 25 seconds. This is a simple comparison between CSV and Avro. The big question now is should you use Afro or not? Well, if your choice is only between CSV and Afro, yeah, absolutely. But if you're using it for large scale big data analytics, there are other file formats out there to choose from such as Parquet and Delta Lake, for example. And the reason is because Parquet, for example, is a columnar storage uh, file format, uh, whereas uh, Afro is a row base uh, storage format. And typically, columnar file format is better when it's used for large-scale analytics. I have a video talking about Parquet uh, up here, if you want to check it out. The other reason maybe you want to use Afro is if you're working with streaming applications such as Kafka, because Afro supports schema evolution, meaning it can handle new and updated fields when uh, the, the new data comes through with new field, additional field, or updated fields, or even can handle missing data as well. And that is going to be useful uh, when we work with streaming application such as Kafka. I've got a blog talking about it in greater detail, not me. And if you want to check that out, check it down in the comment below. And lastly, Afro is a language neutral a serialization system. It supports serialization by Java, C, C++, C Sharp, or even Python. In conclusion, Afro is a data serialization framework. The file is a binary compressed format with a schema in JSON file. Leave your questions down in the comment below. If you have one, I will try my best to help. And if you do enjoy my video today, please press that like button and also subscribe to support my channel or if you want to see more content like this. I'll see you then, see you next time.